My name is Anna and I'm standing outside St Peter Mancroft Church in Norwich. This church has been at the heart of the city for almost a thousand years. The church on this side was founded in Norman times, which is where its name, Mancroft, comes from. Mancroft comes from Magna Crofta, which meant great field. It was important to use this name, which is still used today, to distinguish this church from other churches dedicated to St Peter. For example, St Peter Parmentigate. Shall we go in and have a look? Names are important. Just like the name of this church tells us where it is and when it was founded, our own names often tell us about our own origins or even the circumstances of our birth. For example, John Christmas Beckwith, right here, has the middle name Christmas because he was born on the 25th of December, 1759. In the past, when people first became Christian, they often took on a new name at their baptism as a statement of embracing Christianity and acquiring a new identity. It still happens sometimes, but not very frequently. Baptisms take place still though, right in this font, and even though people don't change their names necessarily, the baptism still happens in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. In addition to place names and personal names, many words we use are in fact names. And since we're in a church, we might as well look at the Bible. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 19 to 20, we read, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But let's close the Bible and look around. This church is filled with names. They are on the floor, on the walls, in the windows, and even scratched onto the lead on the spire at the top of the tower. But there is one name we will look at more closely today, that of James Edward Smith. So James Edward Smith was born in Norwich in 1759 and became one of the most well-known English botanists. He studied at the University of Edinburgh, where he became interested in botany, which is a study of plants. A few years later, he went to Europe and traveled, gathering a large library and a botanical collection. During the course of his life, he wrote many books and thousands of articles. When he came back to Norwich, he lived in Surrey Street, which is why he is commemorated here at St. Peter Mancroft as one of our parishioners. One of his greatest achievements was the foundation of the Linnaean Society in 1788. This society was founded to promote the work of a Swedish scientist, Carl Linnaeus. He was a professor of medicine and botany, who came up with a modern system of naming organisms. It is called the binomial system. Bi means two, and nomine means name. This means that every creature and plant in the world has two names. The first part of this name is the group that the plant or creature belongs to, and the second part is the species or the type of this plant or creature. A bit like our own name, we have our own personal name and our family name. The scientific name of humans is Homo sapiens, which means wise human. Perhaps the most well-known example of this naming system is Tyrannosaurus rex, which means king, rex, of the tyrant lizards, saurus being lizard. We are now in the Earth Chapel, where on one of the panels you can see daffodils, primroses and snowdrops. When you come, see what you can find on other panels here. The scientific names are usually in Latin, but the snowdrops are interesting, because the name is both Greek and Latin. The name is Galanthus nivalis. Gala means milk, and anthus means flower, and both of these words are Greek, 
so it means milk flower. And nivalis in Latin means snowy, so it's snowy milk flower. Primrose has a Latin name of primula vulgaris. Primula means first, and vulgaris means common. This refers to the primrose being one of the earliest flowers of spring. The English primrose is similar, meaning first rose. And although it's not a part of the rose family, the flowers are very similar to roses. Wild daffodils look a little different from the ones you'll see in your garden. The petals around them are a little smaller and twisted in appearance. The Latin name for a daffodil is Narcissus pseudonarcissus lobularis. It is a confusing name, meaning a false narcissus with lobes. Narcissus is from the ancient Greek story of a beautiful young man, Narcissus, who fell in love with his reflection in the pool. The nodding heads of daffodils remind us of him bending down to look at his reflection. Wild daffodils are also called Lent lilies because they flower during the season of Lent, at the time when Christians prepare for Easter. There are lots of plants and animals in this church. We have roses, lilies, snakes, sheep, donkeys, and even a dragon and a winged lion. See if you can find them when you come here. When Shakespeare said, what is in the name, he probably meant not much. But actually, there is quite a lot. Names can tell us stories. They can tell us about origins of things. They can paint beautiful pictures. They can tell us about the scientific order of things and even teach us some linguistic skills. But the most important thing they teach us is how all the creatures in the world, all the plants and all the animals are connected. They all are a part of this binomial system. And us, homo sapiens, human beings, and the musca domestica, which is just a common fly, are a part of this one wonderful world. And that is truly beautiful. Thank you for exploring with us today. And we look forward to seeing you here at St. Peter Mancroft. Now you know where to find us. <laughs>